Hey guys, and welcome back to the HFC Super Nintendo Fun for the bonus block. Hey. Tom, hello. Are you alive hello. today? <laughs> um, well, I made it for a Nintendo land. Okay, I will explain the discrepancy in a minute. Don't worry. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be playing Excite Truck today. One of the uh, was this a launch game for the Wii? I'm not entirely sure. It has the sort of new console game feel to it. Like the production value is not that high, but then again, you're not really playing it for that, but you know. No. Uh, let's have a look. We launch games, because uh, I'm just uh, curious about this. Now, let's have a look. Uh, do, 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 do. Well, these are the list of games for just overall Avatar The Last Airbender, uh, Call of Duty 3, Crayon Shinshan, Alibix, X Sight Truck. Uh, regions released North America, South America. Was this not a launch game for us? I have no idea, honestly. Like this was a game that we sort of added to the thing, and I picked up to start with just for the first time for the marathon. So it's going to be a bit of an experimental playing it by ear kind of run. We've got to do the tutorial first, but yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, what are we doing with Excite Truck, mate? I, I remember hearing you have a certain setup for this stream. Well. It's going to be one of the things where you have to try and unlock tracks if you go along and some of it can be a little bit finicky in the requirements from my practice run. So what we're going to do, we're going to go for probably about an hour and a half, two hours and just see how far we can get. But okay, okay. I'm distracting myself from this tutorial now so I need to actually focus. <laughs> no worries mate, no worries. Uh, what I mentioned earlier regarding discrepancies by the way uh, is that Donkey Kong 64 ran much longer than we expected. Well, I mean, it should have been expected in the end because it's a 101% run of the game. But as such, like, we had to start the bonus block on the 22nd of July rather than the 21st that we originally had planned. So the bonus games had to be moved around in the schedule. So Nintendo Land will be the first one that goes up and is properly the first game of the bonus block since it was unlocked at $500, the lowest requirement. Um, but you'll be seeing Excite Truck first on the live stream, so don't get confused when it goes up on YouTube. Yeah, I originally shifted this around because I thought Tom might need a lion, but no, it's alive, just about. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went to sleep. I, I must have crashed about like nine in the evening, uh, and I woke up about six in the morning. So yeah, I'm well rested. Uh, thank you to people like Loki Rex in the chat asking if I got enough rest. I'm plenty relaxed now. Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm glad to be here and whatnot. Also, I gotta say, apart from, you know, SD quality and jaggies and whatnot, this isn't a bad looking game. It does look alright, yeah, like, the problem that we're probably gonna see a little bit of, the motion controls here are, like, they're early Wii motion controls, so it doesn't have the motion plus, like, helping it out. So it is a little bit all over the place, but it's not too bad. It does make you do the tutorial and then we'll get into some proper races, but you know. Cool, cool. Uh, I was just admiring the reflections on the back of the truck, actually. They're pretty intense for uh, an early game like this. Yeah, it is. Like, I think it may be its own animation. I'm not entirely sure like what technique they're using, but it looks nice. Hmm. When I say early, I mean for the Wii, obviously. It's not like an Amiga game or something. Well, yeah. If this was an Amiga game, it would be the best looking at Amiga games ever. <laughs> okay, we can actually do some races now. I know what people want to see. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, the big damn truck. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Sight race. So the way this works is that you just got to get enough stars by just performing well in the races and doing cool shit as you go along just to like unlock the next set of races so I'm gonna mm -hmm. try and do as much as I can in terms of like drifting and flying and all that let's, let's go with a nice victory red to start with mm -hmm. very good mate very good I don't know how representative this is of Mexican racetracks, but it's here. Mm, do we have anyone living in Mexico who can attest for the accuracy here? Uh, so yeah, this is your like we sort of steering wheel control. So it's like tilting the Wii mode itself from left to right. It mm. takes a bit of getting used to, but it's not that bad, all things considered. It just means that. A little bit, <laughs> like, 
a little bit shaken off by it, that's all. It's okay, man. I know how you feel about motion controls, and I do disagree in some regards, but um, it's always going to be divisive, so I don't think it's like a, uh, a, a done deal, a certain thing across the board. Yeah, I will say that at least in this case it sort of makes sense. It's a driving game and it sort of works like a steering wheel. It's when it really bothers me is when it's just forced in motion control. Like mm. a certain Sonic game. Huh. Remind me if you could please? You know, the one where you use car controls for Sonic for some reason. Oh, secret rigs. Well the game was designed around that, so I don't think that's a problem. There's other games out there, none of which are coming to mind because obviously we're live now and that's how it works. Um, where it's like, why can't I just use a control stick for this? Ah, I've got a good one. The motion controls in Breath of the Wild. I love that game, but the motion controls for like some of the um, shrine puzzles are the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. Mm, like, and there's somewhere you gotta like tilt the fucking switch system around to roll a ball on it like a table or something. I seem to recall mm. that one. That's the exact one I'm talking about, but try doing that with joy cops. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> nice. Okay. So I got over my initial target there on the first race. This does get harder, particularly mm -hmm. around like I think it's the silver cup. Mm-hmm. Just do what you can, man. Yeah. We're, we're all here at the main block of the marathon is done. We're uh, just here for a good time. Now, although we still are taking donations for the Child's Play Foundation, until the end of the marathon, I'm kind of running out of breath here. I guess the past 27 hours is catching up to me. <laughs> That's fine, mate. <laughs> it's the incentive block. It's like the last few days. I think people sort of expect us to dip down toward the end of a long marathon, but, you know. Mm. Well, i got to put on the, uh, you know, top hat and tails for Nintendo Land and show it off properly and whatnot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, look at this. This has a great aesthetic. This is a nice-looking beach level. It really is, yeah. And I will say, I think the Wii U's upscaling is helping to a degree, but it's yeah, also... Yeah. Like, some of the techniques they're using here, graphical techniques, like, I did see a bit of the checkerboard in there just to kind of keep the shadows in check and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And it uh, does work. This seems to be a collab between Monster Games and Nintendo SPD. What else did Monster Games do? Uh, their first game was Viper Racing for Windows. Uh, did some NASCAR Heat games. Uh, let's see, Excite Truck, obviously. Uh, Excite, uh, Excite Bots, sorry. Uh, Trick Racing, which was the sequel. I remember uh, back when NeoGAF was halfway decent, decent, everyone really went nuts over that stuff. God, that feels like an age ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Crap. Uh, oh, they did the 3DS version of Donkey Kong Country Returns. Oh, cool. I, that one, I've heard mixed things about that particular port. Because I, I know the contention was that it lowered the frame rate, but I know that there was a bit of positive feedback to, like, the they rebalanced the difficulty a bit from what I recall, because that was, like, one of the problems with the Wii version. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else have they done. Uh, Excite Bike World Rally, which was a WiiWare game. They're probably given that because they did well with Excite Truck and Bots. Um, Pilot Wings Resort for the 3DS. I want to get that in the next uh, Nintendo fun, if I can, because I always wanted to play it, never did. Oh, they did Xenoblade Chronicles 3D for the new 3DS. All right. There we go. Ooh. So they seem to be given like the little side projects, and from what, it, what I'm hearing, it sounds like they're doing a pretty good job with it. Yeah. Although I don't think they actually do stuff for Nintendo now, because 2015 with uh, Xenoblade 3D was the last one they worked on. Everything else has been PlayStation 4, Xbox, Windows. Um, they co-developed uh, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze with uh, Retro Studios. All right. I suppose uh, like a small studio, they're gonna do whatever they can to get work, and that means whoever's willing to play. <laughs> uh, oh, but in 2020, get ready, because their masterpieces. Either coming and, and has, or has already been released, Tony Stewart's Sprint Car Racing. Oh boy, I can't wait. Mm. Hey Tom, I'm in first somehow. <laughs> cool, keep it up. <laughs> Ain't gonna last long because god, they like some sharp, sharp turns in this. <laughs> oh, so they did, so they did. Nope, no. Nope. Come on, get back here, you bastard. 
And one of the gimmicks in these tracks is that there are certain items that you can go over and it adjusts the terrain, which can send you flying, but that is actually kind of fun in itself, so I'm not too bothered by it. Hmm. Now, are there sounds coming out of your Wii remote, probably? Uh, there's probably very quiet. I think I had it on like the one point of volume, but... Hmm. Well, <laughs> Excite Truck doesn't do things by half, so that's why it's Excite Truck. Okay, yeah. Is there all these sound coming through properly now? Because we did have a little bit of faffing around before we started, because OBS likes being OBS. <laughs> Well, I can't hear anything on my end now, and what I heard on the live stream sounds fine, so... Okay. I had to crash right at the end, didn't I? But I still made it first, sweet! <laughs> hey! In uh, Goldstorm07 says, not gonna lie, this does look kinda fun. It's a fun game to play. It's it not the best racing game ever, but especially if it were a launch title, I'd love the hell out of this. It feels like one of the ones that you just indulge in it for the chaos, and, you know, for that it is doing the job nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, someone asked if Excitebots, the sequel, uh, which used animal themed uh, vehicles and so on, which kind of reminds me of, of, I think it was Scars for either the N64 or the platform after, it was kind of like that. Um, let me have a look, let's see what the Metacritic is. Yeah, go for it. Uh, Excite Truck, Metacritic. Uh, do, do, do. 72, eh, expected. Yeah. Uh, Metacritic Excite Bots. 77, it's in the green. Oh, sweet. No? Okay, we're in Canada now, by the way. <laughs> Jared Bob says for Excite Bots, by the way, as time passes, it gets harder and harder to find games that can actually offer a surprise. So I found the ways in which Excite Bots managed to catch me off guard to be quite pleasing. Even among. Amongst its arcade-style ilk, Excitebots isn't a very nuanced racing game, but it's loud, ridiculous, and crazy enough to be plenty of fun anyway. Oh, nice. Get some air, get some stars up. Maybe not oh. go into a tree. Uh, Smar actually knows about Scars for PS1. Uh, him and his dad played it a lot. Cool. Oh, cool. I'm glad it wasn't a false memory. I got a very close look at all of these trees I'm going past and into. Mm hmm. Yeah. Apparently, Scars was one of the uh, few PlayStation games to allow four players to race in 3D on a split screen if you have multi tap. Oh, right. Yeah. I've learned so much today. This is the educational part of the bonus blog. Uh. I'm actually curious now what the uh, European Wii uh, launch lineup was. Yeah, go for it. Hmm. Oh, let's see. Uh, Wii Sports, which, as we mentioned during uh, the Wii Sports showcase in the main block, was included with the Wii in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, um, the Wii version, launched with the system, so not unlike Breath of the Wild in that regard, it's a cross-platform. Yeah. Call of Duty 3, the first Marvel Ultimate Alliance, Tony Hawk's Downhill Jam, which as Spar and I talked about in um, the Tony Hawk's Underground playthrough, uh, isn't actually that bad if you view it more like an SSX game than you do a Tony Hawk one. Because <laughs> uh, it's all like downhill. Uh, racing and whatnot. Madden NFL 07, Need for Speed Carbon, Happy Feet, Rampage Total Destruction, Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz, which is um, not great. Don't know why Sega decided to uh, remaster that one rather than fucking one and two, but never mind. Uh, Cars, Barnyard, uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, Creature from the Crystal Crab. Uh, Ubisoft did a lot because Ubisoft is Ubisoft, of course. Um, Red Steel's on there, that's all you really need to know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I agree, Flame is a pro at crashing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to play with a Wiimo, okay guys? <laughs> <laughs> you, well, you're doing well enough, mate, so... And it's like the game rewards you for crashing. So, 
use it and you get boost power from doing it, I guess. Well, you get the, as much boost as you need as long as you don't overheat it, so it's a uh, game of managing the timing when it comes to the boost. Ah, I forgot all about that. Yeah, so... <laughs> See, look at the distance, look how far those mountains go. And while I'm sure it's probably just a JPEG, but it looks quite nice. At least the first few mountains look modelled. Like, it's <laughs> sharp enough. Okay. Sorry, that was a bit of a backhanded compliment. <laughs> uh, let's see, did I get over the requirement to move on here? No, I think I've got to retry that, but let's, let's double check. Okay. C for car. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad we're playing a trucks game, do it again! Yeah, so... Let's give that another shot, I've got to get the 135. It was sad that it was suck. Mm. There's another thing I just noticed. You could have just had like red, green, pink for the different colours, but they gave them the, their own names and whatnot. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it looks like there's a good handful that you can unlock as well, so, you know. Mm -hmm. Let's try and just maybe if I try and get a few more drifts in this time, because I was close. I think I was 121 out of 135 I need, and that was including the uh, first place bonus. Mm hmm. Through the rings? Nope, I got one of the rings. <laughs> ha! Good enough. Ah, Talit is awake. Hello, sir. Uh, he will be running Fire Emblem Warriors for us later today. Uh, Flame, you're taking the first COCOM shift on that, right? Uh, yeah, I'll be doing that until, like, it's just so you can get a bit of a break in your most of the day. Mm -hmm. Yep, and uh, after that, uh, I will be taking over. Uh, no, nothing about Fire Emblem Warriors, but Teller is a bro, and I like um, Hyrule Warriors a hell of a lot. So, yeah, yeah there we go. Uh, we, we did uh, Hyrule Warriors for the first Nintendo fun, didn't we? Uh, yeah. Okay, I was planning to bring... Do you think anyone would mind if I brought Definitive Edition into Nintendo Fun 64? Oh, at that point, it would be quite a long time, so I think yeah. you could get away with it. Yeah, yeah, um, you know, I say this as if it's happening. Nothing is set in stone, not even the theme for the next marathon, so uh, we'll let you guys know in the second this news. Yeah, we're deliberately not letting Tom decide on something in case he accidentally leaks it again like he did last year. But... Did I? Yeah, I remember that during the, I think it was the Star Fox stream where you were trying to say Retrothon and you stumbled over your words. Oh, right. Well, <laughs> that was plausible deniability, come on, though. I mean, that was funny. Yeah, it was, it kind of was. <laughs> Spar and uh, Tanner are badgering a bit in chat. Spar says, hey Tanner, we're currently racing through Canada. Stick your head out of the window and wave. <laughs> And Tanner says, I can f confirm this is where I went on vacation. I'm not this close to the mountains. <laughs> uh. <sighs> I gotta say, I didn't expect that many people to turn up for the bonus block, uh, but we have uh, 45 plus people on the stream right now. That's sweet. Is everyone just sort of checking, on, checking in on you, though? <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice, but, uh, you know, I, I don't want to get too big of an ego here. <laughs> it's fine. Doing a lot better than I was last time, so now as long as I win or I think I'm at least second, I should get a big enough bonus to get over the threshold. Okay. Yeah, because last time I think because I was I wasn't like drifting enough and I wasn't getting enough air time, I was missing out on stars. Okay. No, yeah, it's weird. I'm watching on the live stream, and the stream itself is like completely up to date. Like I just turned it on and heard you say what you said a couple of seconds ago. But the chat seems to be responding to stuff I said like a, a couple of minutes ago, which is odd. I don't know whether that's on Twitch's end or ours, but uh, hey, we're here to stream the game, not really uh, have an open conversation with the chat 24-7, so... Yeah, I don't know, like, I think there are different things. Like, I think if people's connections sort of struggling a bit, it turn, turns off the low latency mode, so there might okay. be a little bit of desync there. But... Fair enough. Uh, Tanner says, this game actually looks kind of nice, question mark. Is this native Wii or Wii U? 
or emulated, then uh, it is upscaled on the Wii U. So. Yeah, it's a launch Wii game that we're playing on the Wii U here. Launch in America, gotta yeah. be correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All these little baggies I'm getting, little medals. I'm uh, going to Scotland next. Hmm. I like that truck, I'm going to use that one again. Let's change the colour though. Okay, Let's try keep it fresh. Forest green. Hmm. Uh, there was uh, Excite Truck music in Smash Bros. Brawl, I remember that. Uh, it was the ultimate one, like the playlist that I nabbed that pre stream music from today. I I think it was just a direct re rip rather than a remix, but it does sound cool. Uh, it's yeah. got a heavy guitar sort of soundtrack to it, which is like perfect for a trucking game like this. Let's see, what did the main publications give this? Game Informer gave it Game Informer, sorry, ooh, you can tell there's some latent tightness there, I'm slowing my words. Game Informer gave it a 7 out of 10, which I feel is completely fair. Uh, GameSpot gave it 6.8 out of 10, because they always got to be weird with their point system and whatnot, but it's about expected. Game Trailers gave it 6.5, IGN 8 out of 10, Nintendo Power 85 out of 100, uh, Official Nintendo Magazine 84 out of 100, X Play 4 out of 5. I would say that's roughly how I feel about the game. This is a solid as hell 7 out of 10. It's a great launch title, but it doesn't really have lasting power. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, it, it's the sort of thing, it, it's a good novelty game, and I, I think it's got local multiplayer I want to say. That sounds like it'd be a good time. Yeah, just pick up a uh, Wii Remote and start playing, really. Yeah. Because I'm going so fast. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, Rob, because of the schedule switch around, Nintendo Land is on after this. And I will ask when we're done with this game, give me a few minutes because I, I like to re reset my computer just to refresh things before I start streaming, so... That's fine. You probably don't need to if you need one, but it doesn't help to go in fresh. Yeah, well, I haven't switched off my computer in a while, so... No, fair enough. Yeah, weird thing on um, my computer. The recycle bin wasn't showing in uh, the type here to search thing on Windows 10 the other day, but it's there now. Don't know why. <laughs> well, it's Windows 10, it just sort of changes in front of your eyes. It does, it's magic. Yeah. Like, I did notice there was a weird problem I was having where for the most recent Windows 10 update, for a few days it just wasn't playing ball with my web for some reason, it just kept crashing. Mm -hmm. And I just sort of fucked around with like these settings in my web until they got the new patch for that out and now mm -hmm. it seems to work. But cool, cool. I'm pretty good at getting like the first one or two rings in these jump segments. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I did actually see what the level we're playing on is now. Is this Scotland? Yeah. Cool. I was going to say, really nice castles to race through and whatnot. Yeah. Okay, I think I was a bit low on the P points there. Oh, uh, look at you. <laughs> uh, Flame, what are some of your favourite launch titles? Asks Silver Dude. Uh, well, I think the big go to one, I think Tetris was a Game Boy launch title, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Like, that's the obvious one to me. I'm trying to think, because as it's, like, at least in recent years, I really haven't bought new systems at launch, just because, like, especially the, like, design mentality these days, it's, you know, just get it out and then revise the system once everything's broken. Mm. But, like, yeah, that's the one that comes to mind, Tetris. Okay, fair enough, mate. Um... Here's a funny story. I actually had two GameCubes. The first one was an expensive frigger, and my mum was a uh, a high earner at the time. Not like super high, but higher than she is now. So we bought this one from a shop called Another World in Nottingham City Centre. Uh, you may have one near you if you live in the UK. I don't know. Um, but uh, it was chipped, so you could flip it between NTSC and JP. So I had actually had the Japanese version of Luigi's Mansion, and I somehow managed to get through through the, get through that. Scared as hell because I was like, uh, well, I was really immature, I guess. Still am, but uh, but that was a really good launch game. Uh, let's see, um, launch games for the GameCube European lineup that strike my fancy: Luigi's Mansion, SA2 Battle, uh, the first Spider-Man, Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2, the first Super Monkey Ball, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, Wave Race Blue Storm. That is a really solid launch lineup. Yeah, I suppose so. Like, I 
completely forgot Battle, like Sonic Adventure 2 Battle was a GameCube launch title. Mm -hmm. But I had that on Dreamcast first and I didn't get a GameCube until I think about a year or so later, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dreamcast was my Sonic machine. SA1, SA2. I think I had Quake 3 Arena, but that was about it. I've got quite a few Dreamcast games that I honestly don't know how I came into possession of them, but they're there. <laughs> so, you know. I... Hmm. But it was mostly a Sonic machine, and Sonic and Crazy Taxi mainly for me. Oh, Crazy Taxi for my job. Yeah. I'm surprised they haven't tried to make a new one of those in recent years, but I guess Sega might be struggling financially and whatnot. Sega have been struggling for years. <laughs> yeah, they kind of have. It's a shame, really. Meanwhile, Hell Dragon's over there going, Make Rice Star 2! And I'm like, bro, they're just trying to break even right now. Calm down. Yeah, but like... To, in fairness, give Rice Star to the Mania team, they could make something sick. Okay, have the Mania team program it, but give the artwork to maybe the people who make, um, uh, is, is it Monster Boy and whatnot? That 2D uh, hand-drawn thing? No, don't do that. I have pixel art. I Actually, saw no, it's yeah. gorgeous in pixel art. It is one of the best-looking. Mega Drive games. It is phenomenal how good that game looks. But like, I love S S3 and K. I would say Rise Star PC it looks. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Like just the use of colour mainly. I'd say it's what definitely. brings it to life. Bright, vibrant worlds, but it's not afraid to like have darker contrasts in later ones. Yeah. Next track. Got a lot of S's here, mate, and you were worried. Oh, well, I think it's toward the tail end of this that was where I got up to in my practice run, but I got a new truck. Hey. Oh, oh no, new paint job, but that does. Oh no, I did get a new truck. I got a Summit. There you go. Let's get that funny, funny you got the wolf thing since I started watching Brand New Animal today. Oh, I haven't seen anything to do with that just yet. Hey, it's uh, one of Trigger's Netflix funded animes. Uh, the first episode was pretty good, still need to watch more. It just seems like a one season and done thing, which is very trigger. Yeah, fair enough. In Finland, uh, we got a nice level. Very good, very good. Any uh, Finns here in the chat? Sound off if so. <laughs> I don't actually know what time it is in Finland, so... Uh, <laughs> It might be a uh, futile effort asking this. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this looks pretty. Actually, yeah, this is a really nice looking snow stage. Yeah. Oh god, we got stuff falling over. That's nice. <laughs> hey! Goldman bit chat says, one of Trigger's shows lost in the Netflix jail, like what happened with Little Witch Academia and Beastars. Can you explain that to me, Gold Member? I'm not sure what the context is there. I think what they're probably referring to that sort of bothers a lot of people, at least, is that when Netflix license seasonal shows, they don't actually release it like episode by episode as it's out, they just wait until it's done and then put, put the whole lot up. And so that yeah. means that they kind of lose interest from like people who just want to watch the show as it's going on. Mm. I understand the pros and cons of like binge watching, but for me, I like looking forward to new episodes. So, you know, that format format appeals to me more. And I know I bring this up a lot. I apologise, Flay, but people have said that Steven Universe should have probably gone to Netflix to like have longer times to flesh out more episodes or maybe a higher budget and so on. But Say what you will about hiatuses, it definitely helped keep interest in the show going. That's just a thing in general, isn't it? It's like, you, you want to, like, just dropping everything suddenly, it's like you limit the amount of time that your shows are talking with. Mm, yeah, so exactly. if you want to keep interest, then you need to keep momentum, and that means frequent updates. Yeah. Like, I watched a show recently called High Score Girl, on uh, Netflix, which is also an anime, a really good one, actually, uh, recommended to me by 
Tanner. Don't watch it if you can't handle feels, by the way. Uh, I was very weepy at the end of both season one and season two. It's finished now, so you might as well go binge it if you want. Um, but uh, where the hell was I going with this? All right. It would be much better, I think, and hit a lot harder if it was weekly. And someone says the Japanese Netflix actually is weekly, so... Yeah, it seems like a very arbitrary Western thing to just hold off on release and stuff, even if it's already like ready to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so far behind, but fuck it, I've got 69 points, so nice. Hey, can we go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a uh, high school girl was sponsored by Square Enix, but has a shit ton of Capcom game. Adverse. Yeah, because it's all about like life in the arcades and whatnot. And the romance is like, I would say, B plot for the most part. Like it, it gets a lot of focus, but it's mainly about like, well, high scores and so on. All right. So, so I'd recommend if you uh, haven't seen it, Flynn. Hmm. It's on UK Netflix. Yeah, that thing that I totally pay for. Hmm. <laughs> well, all right. I guess we know where we stand. <laughs> I, I ain't playing for any streaming services. Come on, you know how I am. <laughs> Fair enough, mate. I won't uh, judge you for that. Uh, SilverDude5000 asks, Hey Tom, speaking of Steven Universe, is Save the Light worth it, even as a complete newcomer to the series? I'm looking at it because of the classic Paper Mario gameplay. Absolutely. Uh, you may know that THD and I did a full playthrough of it a few years ago. Um, it's not the hardest game. It is very faithful to Paper Mario in that regard, and it's not super long either, but I would say it's better than Attack of the Light, which was a phone game, and uh, maybe a little bit better than Unleash the Light, which is mainly all battling. There's not much like super big puzzle solving and whatnot. Save the Light is a console game, and it's balanced between fighting and puzzles and talking to NPCs and doing quests in that regard. Uh, so if it's on Steam, I would actually recommend it. I'm going to check this out. Uh, save the Light Steam. Yep, Steven Universe, Save the Light on Steam. Uh, it's currently £19.49 to use uh, Britbong money. Um, I would say 20 quid is about the most you should pay for that because it was very buggy at launch because it was a small studio. Um, what the hell is their names? Uh, sorry, I can't recall. But um, it did get patched over time. Now it's much less buggy, but there are still a few uh, quirks here and there. But if you like the show and you like Paper Mario, I definitely recommend it. Um, it's set, I believe, late season four. Uh, so maybe after the zoo arc, but before the finale arc. So don't expect to see like Lars being a pink space pirate zombie or whatever. I don't think I speak the language of what you've just been saying. <laughs> I, mean, I was just thinking that as the words came out of my mouth, I'm like, Flame isn't going to know what the fuck I'm talking about here. Uh, uh, is it just Save the Light, or is it that combo that comes with the OKKO OK game? Uh, the Steam version is indeed the sole game. I haven't really heard good things about the OKKO OK one, to be honest. Grumpy Face Studio, that's the one. They also did such uh, pretty well received games as uh, the Teen Titans ones. Uh, Teen Titans Go. I keep trying to get Flame into SU, but uh, he says no, I'm antisocial. It's not happening, like, if you expected me to look at that fucking hideous art style for back to like 10 20 minutes at a time, it ain't happening. I like the art style, but I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, but you have shit taste. Yeah, well, we know this, but... <laughs> uh, no, I, I just can't get into like, that particular look of anything. It's not just Steam Universe mm -hmm. or whatever. It's just I find that art style like, physically repulsive. <laughs> well, at the end of the day, I want you to enjoy the content you consume, so that's yeah. why everybody bugs you about it since. Yeah, that's fine. I'll just leave you to your own devices just arguing with randos about it. <laughs> hey, well, you know, if someone's going to comment that my favourite show with misinformation, I'm going to fucking correct tomorrow. Uh, keep in mind, that's not the same as, oh, I just don't like this show. Because, who gives a fuck? I would be arguing with people all day if that was the case. The thing is, like, I, 
I'm no stranger to this sort of thing. I, I think it's kind of obvious that the majority of Sonic discourse you find is based on bullshit. But, like, I find it more amusing to just fuck with those people than to actually try and argue with them. Because, like, well, arguing, well. With, like, arguing mm. with people who don't want to give a genuine argument is a waste of time, whereas just riling them up, that's fuck. <laughs> Well, that just showcases how we deal with problems, I guess. It should be known, I don't really go beyond one or two messages, because I just mute the other person after I'm done talking. <laughs> and I'm the antisocial one. <laughs> don't want to don't deal with the bullshit, sorry. Uh, I'm just rotating the different cars as we go along, so if you guys are enjoying the variety we're getting, so I can crash different cars into the tree each round. <laughs> oh, Midnight Blue looks really nice. Yeah. Uh, Draw drawn, uh, Together asks, have you seen Avatar? I haven't, but again, that's another thing where the art style is enough to bother me. Hmm, fair enough, mate. Actually, yeah, Goldmember, uh, it does remind me a lot of Motorstorm Apocalypse, does the terrain changing. A little bit, yeah, like, I've never had that myself. I think my brother had one of the Motorstorm games, like, uh, shortly after he got his PS3. Mm. I sort of vaguely recall how that went down. Yeah. Motorstorm was a launch PS3 title, wasn't it? Oh, uh, I think the first one was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think Tanner might be getting a bit aggravated. Alright, Flame, I say, injecting my own uh, tone into what he asks. What art styles do you like? I'm pretty sure you guys can guess. I like the Moe anime stuff. Alright, Spa says, you know the answer, Tanner, and it's not safe for Twitch. Good morning, <laughs> slash afternoon, slash evening, starting at 1.55. Uh, Starmech asks, hey, Entom, any other Western cartoon you have been watching lately in the post-SU world? Uh, while it's not the same kind of show or genre, I feel another Mon CN cartoon that's being heavily underrated is Mau Mau. Mau Mau, Heroes of Pure Heart. Pretty fun humour, actually called Bells. Um, I don't watch Mau Mau, mostly because that would require me to go out of my way to get VODs or watch it on TV. But I have heard good things. It's a shame it doesn't do that great in ratings. I gotta say, the backgrounds are gorgeous. Like, they are phenomenally well drawn. <laughs> Look, you even have coconuts falling from the trees in this game. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm easily have... impressed. If you're gonna have like an impact sort of animation, you gotta go for it, ain't ya? Oh yeah, of course. I w actually, I wonder if that's programmed to just drop the coconuts when you're in a crashing scene. Probably, like at least within a certain region. I think that's probably the easiest way to go about that kind of effect. Mm -hmm. uh, draw it together. Is that your friend Justin? Yeah, that's Justin. I'll just say Justin then. Yeah. Uh, Justin says he's been watching close enough. Uh, that's from the guy who did regular show. I believe. I've seen a few clips for that, it seems funny. Um, Spar's been watching Code Geese. Ooh. I've been trying not to crash. <laughs> uh, is CN still airing 12 hours of Teen Titans Go? Or are all those schedules you tweeted just joking at the fact that they wear too, air too much Teen Titans Go? No, they're 100% legit. I'm going to have a look at uh, CN Schedules, the Twitter account that uh, publishes these. Let's see if I can find any. Uh, well, I'm just going to post this in the chat, but uh, they regularly air uh, over an hour or so of Teen Titans Go a day. I mean, they got to have their favourites. <laughs> Is it pronounced Gias? I'm sorry, I have never like heard the name said out loud, so I wasn't to know. The she ra rebo reboot was actually pretty decent. It got better each season. I have some problems with it, like narrative-wise, um, but uh, otherwise I would also recommend that. Especially if you were the type of person who would watch uh, SU and say, oh, I wish it was more like action-orientated and so on. Oh, it should be a space opera when really it's more slice of life say against the backdrop of sci-fi and so on. That's the show you should watch instead. Oh, it was much better than Voltron. Don't worry. I'm sure you, Flame, has even heard inklings of uh, Voltron discourse and whatnot. I 
hear things and I see tweets and stuff, but I'm I just have this habit that I've had to train myself into mm -hmm. where if something doesn't interest me, I just mentally tune it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, yes, uh, Sonic Mon, I'm very excited for Hilda Season 2. That's like comfort food cartoon for me. It's very comfy. Uh, do, 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 do. The call child says, uh, Okay, isn't it odd that Gumball is over, but Cartoon Network just acts like it isn't? It probably isn't. I feel like the cartoon's creator wants to make a movie, because the series did end on a cliffhanger. But it's a very popular show. It's one of CN's highest rated shows. Um, at the, well, at the time that uh, SU was coming to a close, SU was the highest. Then I think it was um, Teen Titans Go. Uh, then it was Gumball. So, yeah, it was up there. It's something to keep handy for when they need a bit of a boost. Um. Well, no, I'm pretty sure Gumball still appears in, like, iDents and stuff like that, Starmec. Like, the schedule I just, you know, posted in chat shows you that it's still an important part of the channel. Sorry, but look at how fucking cool this track is. Mm. Yeah, you should prepare yourself for the Legend of Korra discourse now that it's coming to Netflix. Tanner, and if you thought Last Airbenders was bad when it dropped on Netflix, try doing that with, like, a slightly mediocre sequel. Oh, I've already seen a fair bit of it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure the staff have no idea, Starmec, like, like, whether Gumball's getting stuff and whatnot, because, uh, you know, you have to be working on something to have information about it. Yeah, I remember how Nick treated The Legend of Korra. I remember watching season three and four online because they just didn't air it on the channel anymore. Fucking Avatar. The first one did gangbusters for them. Didn't realise this was going to turn to the cartoon discourse hour, but hey, Flame's <laughs> concentrating on his driving and whatnot. And oh look, it's raining in Scotland. How accurate, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and hey, it still looks nice. It's a little bit pixelated because Flame does not uh, put the bitrate up as high as I do now, but it's still holding up perfectly well, so don't worry about that. It's fine. I have the high quality archive. We might, we might as well use that actually for the sake of the Yeah, mm, I would recommend it. Yeah, because what I do is I uh, stream a uh, thing about 3500 or something, but I would call it at like 10,000, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've decided to, uh, now that I know my internet and PC can take it, while in Discord, while co-comming and whatnot, uh, I decided to bump the bitrate up to about 5500 and uh, stream at 1080p. And that's working out great. I had 18 frames dropped during the course of that 27 hour stream. 18. And that was just while it was on pause during Donkey Kong 64. Yeah. Now, I will say I'm slowly working on the archive. It's going to take a bit because I've got to fuck around with some stuff. Yeah, just to don't, get it don't worry working. about it. Uh, Schedule-wise, I feel like um, the Super Smash thing will appear on August 1st or July 31st on YouTube, so you've got time, obviously. Yeah. Oh, no, that, that weren't you don't need to edit one, that it, so it's going to be. You don't need to edit it, so it's going to be fine. Okay, I'm sorry for talking over here. You can now play in the Gold Cup. Yeah, okay, I was going to say that the one we thought was Scotland was China, which does make sense, given that we had, like, the... Fans to preachers and whatnot, but ah, well, e oh, ah, e -oh. going back to Canada now. Sure. Let's have a let's have a plum crazy one. Yeah. And I will Plum's say nice they, the screen tearing is only minor, but there's a very slight tear at the top of the screen sometimes. That's in game, but it only seems to be menus, so that's fine. You know, it's weird, my Sony Vegas does that for me on the preview screen. Like, the final videos turn out fine, but for some reason the screen tearing in that alone. It might be because you've got a, a modern graphics card with a really old one now. Um, well, it is an LG thing, so... I had to 
hook you up with a fucking like VGA adapter. It's an old monitor. <laughs> hmm. Eh, what else? It, like, I, it's, sometimes you get that when there's a slight inconsistency with like refresh rates and whatnot. Well, as you can tell from when looking at our videos, Flame, it's not in the final yeah. copy, so I don't really care. Oh, that's fine. That's just why that probably happens to you locally. Mm. Oh, Spargas that as well in Sony Vegas, so there we go. Oh, okay, maybe it's just Vegas. <laughs> oh, Sonic Boom on Netflix? That might be an American thing. Maybe. You know, I like Sonic Boom, but I don't feel it's as funny as everyone says. It's funny in short bursts. That's probably the way I see it. Like, I can, ha I can have a little bit of a chuckle at Ha Ha Sonic, Ha Ha Sonic fans for a while. It's just when that's most of the material, it kind of gets old after a bit. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't help the fact that the writers fucking jerk themselves off about it on Twitter all the fucking time. Yeah, well, that's the price you pay for, um, you know, following content creators. And I say this as a content creator myself. Like, I don't make anything near the level of um, effort and quality that a TV show is. I just talk over other people's work, but uh, the people behind these things are people, and I am an obnoxious person. I try not to be, but it's just part of my personality, so you run the risk of getting annoyed if you follow me personally on Twitter. That's actually why I made the ntop 64 underscore HFC account in the first place, so people don't have to follow me to get updates and whatnot. Yeah, that's fair. It's also why, like, I have multiple YouTube channels I run, but I don't link back to my Twitter because my Twitter is basically just a like streamer consciousness. It's not like video specific or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, Z Bulldog says Pokemon got moved to Disney SD. I think no, they lost that. It, at least in the UK, it's on Netflix now, isn't it? Uh, it's on Netflix in the US. I'm not entirely sure about the UK. Mm. Because again, like, if it if it's not on like fucking YouTube or some shit, then uh, I'm sort of shit out of luck when it comes to streaming services. So, okay, bro. You can tell how much Cartoon Network has gone downhill that they lost Pokemon. That was one of their biggest draws, and it just poof disappeared. Yeah, well, I imagine the Pokemon's quite an expensive license, so to be fair. And well, Netflix have this way of just throwing like truckloads of money at anything they want so yeah they're gonna be in the red probably forever on Netflix yeah but that sort of is their business approach it's just get the names in and I sort of get it to an extent because every new thing they get that adds a little bit more value to their service so it's like a long-term thing that will grow over time yeah it just it, it just does become a bit annoying and like I do sympathize with people who are trying to watch like anime legally and then Netflix just buy it and hold it hostage for a few months before actually deciding to release it. Yeah, I will say one thing about Netflix and anime. It's really annoying that they don't have a full English translation sub. Like, I was watching, again, High Score Girl, and um, I had to turn the subtitles off when I was watching the dub, because the dub is pretty good. The main dude's voiced by Johnny Young Bosch. Um, and it didn't match up with what was actually being said because it was translated for the Japanese and BNA has this problem as well. Oh uh, yeah, like subbing can be hit missing a lot of things to be fair. Like sometimes that's just the nature of base. Sometimes it's because Crunchyroll want to pay their like translators fuck all. <laughs> These guys work hard all right. Do you know how much I appreciate every time a new episode of Game Center CX gets tra translated? That like happens every couple of months maybe yeah but it's like it, it's especially kind of insulting with a crunchy old thing because like you got that going on but then you've also got their employees like the in-house ones just bragging about their fancy offices and all that shit and it's like guys you've just had this scandal read the room <laughs> that was a little bit low there on star count so i'm gonna give that one another shot with the summit don't, don't uh, worry about it mate it's all good so, um, what are we working on after these cups are done? Uh, well, <laughs> this is basically it. We're working through the cups. I seem okay. to have been going a little bit better than I did in my practice run, but naturally, you know, <laughs> that's why I left myself the hour of we'll we'll see what we can unlock in a couple of hours. That's fine, man. It actually works out better for a spar and I if you finish earlier. Yeah. All right. 
I know we were not sure about availability and that, so, you know, we're, mm. we've got the two hour cap in case we need to move on, yeah. but that's fine. Uh, Spa says he's going to start getting ready, so it's all good. Yeah, that's fair enough. So is this still the Gold Cup or the Platinum one? This is the Gold Cup still, but I think this is the first one. Okay. But like I say, I, mi I missed the star count on the last one, so I need to get it up. It's interesting seeing a points-based like racing game where you win by actually doing tricks and whatnot, more so than just simply ranking high. Well, I'm actually really appreciative of that. Because of the kind of game it is, I feel like this is the sort of thing where if you had to perform well in a traditional racing sense, it would probably get quite annoying. Whereas, mm. like, doing drifts, getting air and stuff, like, the game lends itself to that, so it just works so much better. Yeah, like, if you don't have a gimmick, build your game around that gimmick. Don't, like, just mash it in there, because people can tell, and, uh, that's why, you know, Excite Truck does it well, whereas I think uh, other games don't really do it well. And I don't have any off the top of my head because I'm just trying to sound philosophical here, where really I'm a big old hack. See, look how big these levels are. Holy shit. Yeah, like, and Rain Effect as well right now is not the most complex thing, but the fact that that's running over the top of this as well as, like, the long distance going on, that's, mm -hmm. that is impressive. You know what, I have not had the Tiltify pay job. I should go check that now. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should. <laughs> Sorry, I'm uh, still uh, working up to doing stuff and uh, whatnot. Um, we haven't had any donations today, but that's fine overall. Yeah, we are in the incentive block now, so now, now you're really like, appreciating the like, payoff of your donations, so that's fair <laughs> enough. In case you guys are wondering uh, what we have raised to date, it's $7,252.62, which smashes our initial goal of 4000 or so. Yeah, like, that's way more than we could have possibly asked for. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like keeping it at that total is going to be our uh, go-to for future things, because I feel like we're just the right size group to be able to do that. Yeah, we'll see. Like, sometimes we do have to pay attention to what's going on. Like, I actually thought we might struggle this year, given, you know, like, lockdown and people are lost work and whatnot, but it seems that people are just save money away and just being extra generous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing, frankly. Yeah. What's not amazing is your inability to uh, hit those rings, mate. <laughs> I, I got about two of them. Two out of six is not a pass. Oh. Well, whatever, as long as you're having fun in your big damn truck. <laughs> well, yes I am. Uh, I'm trying to think, was the big damn truck meme when Reggie first appeared? Because I think there might have been a few years apart between those E3s. I honestly don't know. Right, because when he first came out he said, My name's Reggie, I'm about kicking ass, I'm about taking names, and we're about making games. Now say what you will about, uh, you know, how he handles stuff, I would say like in the middle of his career where Nintendo was really struggling, but the man was a professional and he got shit done when it came to, uh, you know, PR and whatnot. So I hope he's, uh, you know, doing well at his new job and whatnot. He's supposed to be retired, but the man just cannot stop working. It's like, that's fair enough, you know? <laughs> no, I respect that. Yeah. Okay, we got a new truck, we got the Serpent. Let's give that a shot. Oh, that looks cool in green, actually. Yeah, well, it's just a Serpent. you got to go with green. Yeah. Finland Tanker Hop. Mm hmm. Oh, God, this is great. Look at this. Holy shit. Yeah. Well, like, obviously, it's not 60 frames a second or anything. Nah. But to say it's even able to run at all like this is pretty impressive. Yeah, like, you can feel the 30, but, you know, it's an early Wii game. Like, I know the Wii is, uh, you know, it's not the most powerful console ever. It is literally a souped-up uh, GameCube, or two GameCubes duct-taped together as the beam used to go. But, um, hey, 
GameCube games were pretty uh, low res and filled with jaggies as well. So just compare like, I don't know, Blue Storm or whatever versus this, and you'll be able to see the difference clearly. Yeah, I will say I've got a soft spot for the whole Jackie look in itself. Like I know that's, yeah. that is one of the things that Nintendo do still get a bit of flack for in their in terms of like their art design and that they don't tend to anti-alias stuff. But mm. it's never been that big of a deal to me. Uh, so I mentioned Sakurai in regards to like workaholics and whatnot, and uh, I'm pretty sure he did confirm semi recently that he is making sure to properly take breaks and whatnot, so he, he's not burning out anytime soon, thankfully. That's good, because he was, like, actually hurting himself, so I'm glad he's sort of taking it easy now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> member says, the GameCube architecture was so good, Nintendo decided to bottle its next two systems after it. Basically. <laughs> wow. Nintendo is so innovative. I love how every generation has a new shop, and you have to buy everything all over again. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> um. I want to point out, by the way, this track does have ice physics. Oh, okay, so that's why you're uh, not able to uh, hit any of these rings. No, that's because I'm bad at the game, but like, it has ice physics too. <laughs> oh god, yeah, Stomach, I remember that uh, thing about Sakurai having an IV trip connected to him while he was working on Ultimate. Yeah, that, that's the sort of thing I, I was getting at, and I think he did his wrists in at one point too. I mean, you saw like that Banjo Kazooie presentation. The man uses two controls at once to test shit. Yeah. Uh, Silver Dude put it right. Let's be real. Graphical art style is better than graphical fidelity. No, I agree. Art style is king. Yeah. Well, this has a semi-realistic aesthetic, and when you combine that with the cartoony nature of it just makes it look super appealing in motion. Yeah, it really does, yeah. Come on, let's get in front of this guy. That was Sweet. nice. Yeah. That was clean. <laughs> Good finish. Yeah, I think the re the milestone there was only like 95, so I'll take mm. that work. Someone says, uh, Sonic one says, Scott Pilgrim the game for Switch when? Boy, that's a, a copyright minefield. Um, although... I feel like Ubisoft hinted at something in regards to that on Twitter a while back. Like, someone was posting about it, and a Ubisoft account, like, tweeted at them with, like, the eyes emoticon or something. Yeah. Is that a confirmation, or is that just an intern having fun? Mm, who knows. Uh, morning, Ali Spill. Yeah, I'm doing okay. I got a good night's sleep. Had a good meal after I was done, so... Uh, Tana says, here's an interesting thing, in Japan, the highest paid CEO cannot have 10 times more pay than the lowest paid employees, meaning that Nintendo CEOs <coughs> excuse me, are fairly low paid compared to most game companies. That said, their low paid employees are paid way more than the Western ones, um, and he knows this because he was uh, minimum wage at uh, Bioware. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting thing, like... Japanese culture often gets slammed for um, glamorizing overworking and duty and su such like that. But um, at the same time, yeah, I feel like their CEOs are, I don't know if less corrupt is the term to use, but more respectful of their employees. As like, far as, yeah, as far as I understand, a lot of the culture, like, a lot of people in Japan, like, to them, their company they work for is sort of an, like, not actually, but like, considered sort of an extension of their family, like, they have that sort of relationship with the people they work with, and so, like, there's, like, that kind of is a double-edged sword, because then, like, people are inclined to overwork, because they feel they have the duty to the company, but it also means that people aren't going to necessarily try and screw over, screw over other people yeah. that work with them. Yeah, um, Goldman Barash says Nintendo has an average employee retention of 14 years. Nice. Which is pretty good. And uh, to add on to that, uh, you may remember uh, during one of Nintendo's lower financial points that um, there was articles about uh, Iwata, Satoru Iwata, God rest his soul, uh, actually cutting his salary so they wouldn't have to fire anyone. And I think it's just stuff like that which leads into what 
gold it's a uh, gold storm uh, the key is that they have a group based mindset in Japan uh, rather than an individualist mindset so social rules and laws are built around benefiting the whole yeah and as Tana said uh, Iwata's salary wasn't that much to begin with so Her they announced the Gretzico season 3 Nice. Yeah, because isn't like the virtual Comic Con thing going on right now? I haven't got a clue, honestly. <laughs> well, that's fine. I gotta check my Twitter for that. Yeah. Let's have a look here. <laughs> uh, sorry, I just read the latest hard drive tweet. Do you follow them? I do. I. So, like some of their humans find sometimes it doesn't really hit. It's like the onion for yeah. video games, basically. Uh, Disgraced Smash Bros player announces hiatus, plans to main self for a little while. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's have a look. I'm scoring down. I'm scoring down. I'm scoring down. Still scrolling, baby. Hmm. Not seeing any. Announcements here, but uh, I'll take your word for it. I'm still going. Why don't you actually search for it rather than expecting the TL to spoon feed you the information? <sighs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Aggressico uh, Season 3 coming to Netflix August. Well, I'll be damned. Oh, Ben Diskin was talking about it. Yeah, he plays Hyder in the show. Alright. I really like Ben Diskin as a voice actor because on the one hand he can play such a goofy character like young Xehanort and sound menacing as hell. I actually find young Xehanort kind of intimidating in some of his darker scenes. Um, it's because of the uh, gruffness he gives the voice. Um, but on the other hand he can play actually goofy and lovable characters like Hyder so the dude has range. <laughs> And in terms of the, like uh, angry characters and whatnot, uh, he was great as Eddie Brock in uh, Spectacular Spider-Man. Uh, Tanner, I don't even know if I want to read that out. Do you want to hear a lewd fact from Tanner about Canada? Go for it. Fun fact, the Canadian government just announced that to prevent the spread of COVID-19, oh, we yeah. should use uh, glory holes for sexual encounters. Yes, I did say that. <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad idea. I mean, couldn't you... I don't even want to... Go on, Tom, finish your sentence. Okay, well, why don't you just create a mask with, like, a fucking thing that goes down your throat, all right? So you can suck dick without spreading the disease. How about that? How does that work? I'm pretty sure that's already a thing. God fucking <laughs> damn it. <laughs> <laughs> we are having such intellectual stimulating discussions and whatnot as well, but hey... There we go. Uh, so you're telling me this isn't Scotland? I... I've lost track of where we are, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he was the crazy money guy in Kill the Kill, uh, the dub. Yeah, I love that guy. Yeah, I never really got into Kill the Kill. I think it sort of fell on the, the wacky random stuff a bit too much, at least the first few episodes, and it sort of put me off. Oh, he was number one, number two in Kids Next Door as well. I knew it was number one. I didn't know he was number two as well. Obviously, he was a uh, young Joseph Joestar in the the JoJo job. It took me a while to get used to it, but I, I feel he is a good dub character. It's weird how he suddenly gets voiced by uh, a American dude, Richard Epcar, in uh, part three. So the accent just completely leaves. Though then, then again, he did grow up in America did the character sir. Yeah, and I'm just not that interested in the idea of watching Jojo dubs, I'm not gonna lie. It is okay, it's hit on this way, it's hit on this. There's really not that many things that I care to watch dubbed honestly. Well that's cool, it's cool. Like I will say Avdol, his dub voice is perfect. It is absolutely just a one to one translation pretty much. Oh, okay. I'm 
might not make this one. Oh no. It's because I need the first place bonus, but I think I'm too far back to get it at this point. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I was about to say, like, the, the roofs look wrapped for the purpose of racing, but... Yeah. yeah, I don't think I'll get this without the bonus. Yeah. It's yeah. fine, mate. You're on uh, Platinum now, aren't you? Uh, no, it's gold. I'm pretty sure. Oh, well, yeah. okay. Let's I guess uh, we will. I guess we will hit that um, <laughs> that uh, thing as well, unless you finish by uh, half past. Yeah. Yeah, it was what? a little bit off, so I need to go. Go on. Ten past four already. Jesus. Yeah. Time flies, I guess. Mm. Yeah, blind them with neon yellow, that'll work. Yeah, so this one is Scotland. Wait, part five is dubbed already? Oh. Huh. Expect it to take longer. Uh, what do you think we're going to get announced with part six, mate? I have no idea. It usually takes a little while, but that's fair yeah. enough. Like, David Pro do a great job, and I really hope they get to continue it to like part seven and uh, eight when that gets finished in like 2052. Yeah. But I, I'm waiting until it's fully done to uh, actually read part eight this time. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> Something one says, you just jumped the Springfield Gorge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, basically. <laughs> Oh, did part A just have a wild chapter tanner? That's great, you tell me anything and I'll rip your nuts off. <laughs> All four of them. There's a JoJo reference for you. <laughs> yeah, I know, like, JoJo is a spoiler minefield. Like, I, I knew uh, a few bits here and there about JoJo, like, before I watched the first anime adaptations um, because I, I feel like um, I got to yeah I watched the anime adaptations for 1, 2 and 3 and while I was waiting for 4 to be announced I read 4 through 7 mm. um, but I, I didn't really feel the need to read the mangas for 1 to 3 because I had already read stuff and also I'm not super a, a fan of Araki's earlier art styles I find it very hard to keep track of yeah it's like so detailed and like there's so much going on. The thing with JoJo is it's like you hear a spoiler, you want to see or read it. In, yeah, basically. Like action. So there's. You know, if I were to say to you, oh, in JoJo Part 9, like, one of the main stand users dies, but he carries on being the protagonist, you'd be like, what? I want to fucking see how that works. <laughs> Actually, that's a really good idea. <laughs> Do that for Part 9. Kind of like a good version of um, that dude from Part 5. Oh, yeah, I know the guy. Yeah, the one who dies and his stand just keeps attacking. Yeah. <laughs> Forget the name of it. I wonder if that thing uh, got uh, rewritten out of existence when uh, the part six thing happened. I know part seven onwards is a uh, different continuity entirely. Mm. But I know Kane was the name of the dude. It's um, the stand I'm thinking of. Part 3 is good. I would say Part 5 is um, Part 3 done right, honestly, because it has the travelling aspect, um, but it has the best stand fights in the series. It's, honestly, like, I like the characters a lot, but the group isn't really very fleshed out all that well, and I feel like Kakuin, Avdol, uh, Polnareff are just much better characters. N Notorious B.I.G., there we go. So Nice, nice. Unlike part five, which I feel like the anime basically saved, um, like David Pro did an amazing job of it, uh, I don't think part six is going to super benefit from an adaptation in the same way, because it's kind of gonzo in a way that I'm not super into. Like, it becomes very irreverent at times, and uh, JoJo is kind of irreverent at the best of times, but 
There's also a kind of depth to it and whatnot. Yeah. Well, I won't call it bad or anything. Like, Geraldine's great. Hermes and uh, Foo Fighters are bros. Um, Pucci is great. Um, I don't know. There's just something about it. Everything okay over there, mate? Yeah, just had to turn me fan on. <laughs> That's okay. Screaming. It's hard work. I can't remember a time where I turned my uh, fan off, honestly. Well, uh, it's just like, it sort of gets hot without me really realising, so... <laughs> well, I mean, I have to keep my window closed, because, what well, you know it, bees like to fly about near my window, so that's why I keep my fan on. Yeah, fair. Just to make sure there's some air flowing through the room, even if it's just recycled air. <laughs> I have my fan on my window still in front of the window, so in theory it should be blowing out cool there, but... Yeah. You know. <laughs> What is it with the Brits and us just throwing open windows to try and entice a breeze in that doesn't exist? Well, you cling to whatever hope you get. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true, I suppose. Also, our homes retain heat, unlike American-built ones. Hmm. But though on the plus side, uh, Americans do have AC. That'd be nice in the summer. Yeah. It's just giving you need to... It'd be quite a big project to install it, and it's just kind of hard to justify that for maybe a few weeks of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom, there's a Jet Set Radio spiritual successor coming from the makers of Lethal League. Interesting. Yeah. I wonder if they're going to get Naganuma in for that then. Hmm. Something they've worked with it before. Bomb Rush Cyberpunk. Let's have a look at this emotion. Oh, bad. Wow, that actually looks great. Oh. <laughs> Like, it just looks like the main character, but with different hair, but what, what are you going to do? That's what people want, that's fair. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, yep, Hideki, sorry, I'll say that again. Hideki Nakunuma is indeed scoring the game. Oh, sweet. So, there you go. you got to have him in, you know? Yeah, it's like his music just sets the mood for that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Some UK homes have uh, ceiling fans, not as standard. Oh, if you're wealthy, you might have something. Hmm. Yeah, Hidaki uh, Nagayuma strikes me as the kind of guy who knows he's a meme and uh, just goes with it. Like, yeah. he, there's, there's no bitterness there at all. Oh, absolutely. If you see his Twitter, you know that for sure. <laughs> he, he loves retweeting Family Guy memes. Yeah, and telling people if he's horny today or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, AC is a... Uh, Jesus. AC is not a standard in the UK, no. It's because we live on an island, which is com constantly buffeted by wind and rain, you know? Yeah. So is this the Platinum Cup? Uh, if you, like, I have lost track of what we've been doing. I've just been letting you talk while I've just been going on to the next race when everyone unloads. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, mate. Don't worry. I'm glad you're having a good time of it, at least. Yeah, I'm just driving me truck. You're basically the radio, except you're not like going over to Linda Skinner's songs every few minutes. So you're less, you less exciting in that respect. Also less likely to get B by uh, Twitch and YouTube, so... Oh, yeah. <laughs> see how I did. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Next track. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, that was the last gold one. So okay, cool. On to platinum next. So, how many races per cup are there? Oh, the first one was four, the rest are five. So, there's okay. five more races. And how long would you say a race is on average? A few minutes. So, we, cool. might, we might get this done. It depends on how much grief it gives me. Okay, mate. Well, Spar says even if it's two hours long, um, 
he's good to go because Nintendo Land is probably not going to take an hour. I can tell you that much. I did see a 19 hour long play if you want 100% that one. Who to fuck? <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? You're going for high scores on everything 10 times in a row? I don't know what they were actually doing, but. <laughs> right, now I'm curious. I'm going to go look this up. Yeah. Make <sighs> me look up. Nintendo Land. Nintendo Land play. play. Yeah. It's the first one that shows up. Okay. Gotta correct you. All it's right. 17 hours and 25 minutes. Oh, well, that makes so much difference then. Why is this 17 hours? I have to know. Taurus is like, going mad in the song right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, three hours of The Legend of Zelda Battle Quest? And that's not the first time it was in the video either. <laughs> like, are there like hard modes of it or something that they might have gone back to? I don't know. <laughs> and it's scaring me. Oh, I mean, it's part two of your like, long runs then. <laughs> World of Long Plays would fucking shit himself if you saw this. I don't know, World of Long Plays have a few offenders of their own. Like, I mm. did see their... Like, I, I don't know which of them did it, but like the World of Long Plays run of Mega Man Battle Network, where the guy left in five hours straight of him grinding against Number Man. Wow. Okay, Tana puts this into perspective a little bit. Uh, is it every Nintendo Land game? Because if it is, that would be 19 hours. Um, yeah, it seems to be every game. Uh, it has a bajillion modes, the Pitman game itself is like a 5 hour campaign, Metroid 1 is a couple of hours, and there's like 45 levels for each game. Yeah, that is a packed game, and it's in a launch title as well, so kind of a shame we didn't get the hype that um, Wii Sports did. Well, it's because like, it's revolving around the whole gamepad gimmick, I assume, and that just doesn't sell itself quite as well as, you know, if you wave your remote like a baseball bat it's baseball if you like hold it like a golf club it's golf it just doesn't lend itself quite as naturally no not particularly no also i apologize if i can't keep the screen straight uh for some reason they decide to make what appears on tv like a camera thing so if you tilt the uh the wii u gamepad it uh tilts the screen <laughs> oh good day yeah well went and cropped everything nicely for nothing i guess <laughs> No, I don't think Nintendo Land did come with the console. Uh, no. That's why I never played it until now. Yeah, no, it was sold separately. Yeah, N Nintendo Land is really for multiple people, whereas Wii Sports was just to show off the console. Yeah, I'd say. Oh, it came with the console in North America. Huh. Oh, so they go that's the other way around this time. <laughs> yeah, like, that's the reverse of what happened with the Wii and Wii Sports. Interesting. Back in Scotland. That nope, didn't mean to go that way. <laughs> Wii Sports didn't come with the console in America. Trust me, I know these things. I, look it, I looked it up. It may have done uh, eventually, but it didn't initially. To be fair, sometimes shops give their own bundles as well. Yeah. I'm aware you bought the console, Spa, I'm not arguing that, <laughs> but if you wanted to commission Wii Sports Resort for us to do a quick lock on, I would gladly do that. It may have been a thing in Canada. Look, I will take the L if I'm wrong, but <laughs> we, we've had this discussion before. I'm not the only one who thinks this, right? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Back me up here, come on. Well, I'm busy playing my car game. You're the one with like the whole fucking internet available to research stuff. <laughs> okay, in Japan it didn't come with a console. Okay, <laughs> fucking fine. <laughs> you know how tilted I get when misinformation happens, so I'll take that L. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Tilted is a good term to use when you're uh, fucking salty. Because it perfectly describes your state of being. You're literally tilted. Yeah. <laughs> this is a similar set pieces to the previous Scotland course, but it seems like there's less power ups to boost you through the forest, so you've got to be a bit more careful. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, how much does it cost for a quick look? Uh, it's either fifty dollars for the quick look on its own, or seventy for the quick look, and a hour fifteen's worth of TV comms. I'm talking about my Patreon here, and I haven't been advertising it during the thing for obvious reasons. Yeah. And that covers the cost of the game. It covers the time working and so on. So it's not just like, oh, this is a video game. I'll put the price up a bit. No, sometimes. Uh, it literally just comes in as just enough to buy the game. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it uh, even goes a little bit over, but I'm not so uh, stingy like that, so I don't say anything. Yeah. Well, you just did. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. One two switch was fucking baffling. Yeah, like, they're trying to catch the same like I guess immediate success that they have with Wii Sports for these kind of novelty games, but like Wii. Sp Wii Sports, I think, was just a, like, it just sold itself, and so it solely comes down to what the product is, rather than how much you try and shield, like, oh, we have this new gimmick. Yeah. Fuck, I'm all over the place here. Well, you gotta get your hand in the game, mate. You're asking a lot of me. <laughs> That's a good point, Justin. Arm should have been the packing game. It really should have. I think with that one they were trying to recapture the Splatoon thing. Oh, absolutely. But, again, it just doesn't sell itself the same way. What they should have done is pack arms in and then have a deluxe version come out like two to three years, or even like a sequel, and bada bing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to redo this one. Well, there you go. Yes, like we know about the milking game. Come on. I time. What is it? You're not baiting me, Flame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have done that before you went to bed. But <laughs> <laughs> Probably would have had a bit more success. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, what's he talking about? Just a greasy so you can go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Tana says Yakuza 7 is getting a dub, which is impressive because I don't think that ever happens. And uh, George Takai is in it. Oh, right. I think the first Yakuza game, like the original PS2 version, had a dub, if I recall correctly, but I don't yes, think any of the more modern versions do. Yeah, Mark Hamill was um, Majima, I believe. Oh, right. I've just been sitting here without music for a while now. I don't know why. I had the Sight Draw OST here. I guess I'll put it on. Yeah. Fuck, you just pushed me in the back. <laughs> yeah, Judgment uh, apparently was really good. Like, why I watched Pat play of it was great. So, of course, he plays the whole thing, like, offline, unlike with Yakuza 6, which I was also really enjoying. I don't know what they were going for with the ending of that game, but the rest of it was pretty entertaining. Uh. Oh god, I'm in the trees. Okay, I'm Come past on. the trees. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Super tree run, mate. Yeah, but we like. I really need to pick this up in this one just to get over the thing, because I don't think I'm going to win the race and get the big bonus. You need that big bonus. I haven't watched Pat play Deadly Premonition 2 yet, I've been a bit busy. Uh, Tyler says, Flame, you could change to a truck with better handling. I probably should, yeah. <laughs> Let's not keep Spar waiting, though. Yeah. Whoa. 
Yeah, Yakuza would probably be a very long series. If I had to record without anyone, it would probably be with Tanner. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, because I've got nothing for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sparse says, Flame, you should change to a player with better handling. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. Do you want to come take the fucking controller? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That could have been a nice big bonus if I didn't, like, slightly bugger up the landing. <laughs> yeah, you stalled there. Why do you change to a, uh, a car with better handling now, mate? Well, I'm like, few, like, just round the corner from the end, so I'll finish and banking whatever I get here. My God. I just noticed this course has uh, two laps instead of three. Does that vary? Yeah, a handful of them have. Uh, it just depends how long they are. Yeah, it's like Baby Park having kind of like seven. Yeah. Let's see, so let's go change the truck. Oh, I unlocked a new truck. Let's see what this one's like. <laughs> Handling zero. <laughs> That's quick. That's medium hand in the one I add. So this one's quick, so that in theory should work better. Maybe. Mhm. Mm now, only one way to find out. OST really goes ham, doesn't it? Yeah, like the guitar in particular is like way over the top, but it's perfect. If you want like over the top racing game like this, you need to have uh, the music keep a certain tempo, you know? Absolutely, yeah. Whee, look at it go. <laughs> yeah, boy. I may be easily amused, but it's toward the end of the marathon. I'm going to sink, like, soak this up. <laughs> yeah, go for it, mate. If you're having fun with the game, we're having fun watching you. Uh. Move it. <laughs> Damn, that was a good super truck smash back there. Yeah. Oh. Left it a bit too late to take the shortcut, but that's kind of what happened when I only found out about the shortcut toward the end of the last round. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I can see that guy who was in fourth just then came up from the other way. This thing feels a lot faster than the other car I had. Yeah, yeah, it seems that. Like some of the jumps you're making here would have been possible before. Yeah. So you don't have to come in first to win overall, you just have to get points and coming first gives you more points. Yeah, first place gives you a bonus and that like can help push you over. I did for quite a few of the earlier tracks. Right. <laughs> Spar says, I think this truck has higher max speed but worse handling. So the opposite of what you wanted. <laughs> oh, hey, well, as long as he, as long as he's going fast and getting points, we don't care. <laughs> I'm trying to take advantage of the extra terrain just to get uh, a few extra jump buffs. <laughs> Mm 
If I go... <laughs> Don't forget to use your boost! No! Oh. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Let's try this way. Yeah, I can. Holy shit, I weren't ready for that! Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> and I made it! Nice! I don't think I'm gonna make it overall, but fuck it, that was cool! <laughs> Uh, oh well, like, what I might do is, given we're on the tail end of the showcase, let me just go on to another track and yeah. just get something different to look at for a few minutes. For sure, mate. You can always make it back up. Yeah. I got a trophy for Super Truck Smashes. Cool. Nice. I like how they're physical trophies and whatnot. Yeah. Alright. Go back to... I think I had a bit of luck with the wolf, I wanna say, so... Okay. Going to Devil's Ladder in Mexico now. Uh-huh. Okay, the entire canyon's gonna fall apart. Whoa! Here's a bit of that motor storm action. Yeah, this is fucking sick. It's fine, I wasn't the only one who crashed there. <laughs> no, a, a fucking mountain was falling on you, okay? I think it's fair. Yeah. I will say I am absolutely loving the terrain here, like there's so much shit that I'm just flying off of. It looks like a really fun course actually. Yeah. Like, I can see why they've saved this one till quite a bit later on, but mm. god it's a reward. <laughs> just trying to land on that. Ow. <laughs> yeah, well, I've still got a nice landing. Mm -hmm. Getting them points, getting paid. Hey Galvatron, welcome to uh, the uh, welcome to the stream. I might have said Galvatron there. Sorry, force a habit like it transforms at all. Galvatron, uh, this is the first game of the day. You haven't missed much. Uh, Nintendo Land is coming up not too long from now. Yeah, probably about twenty minutes or so. Why are you doing so well there? Why are you in last place? Because <laughs> I crashed into fucking everything. Well. There we go. Let's destroy what's left of this canyon. Nice. Yeah, we're playing a bit of excite truck here. We've got our hands on a big damn truck. <laughs> yeah. But this one's not quite as big as one of the others that we use it, to be fair. No, they're all big damn trucks in my heart, alright. <laughs> uh, it's got big damn truck energy. <laughs> hmm. Doing good on points, mate. <laughs> Don't you suggest yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to stay in first because getting the bonus will push me over. Mm. Let's go 
go over this way. You got it. Purple truck's trying to give it all this, mate. You're not going to let him have his way, are you? Uh. First place. Wow, that was a really well done track, mate. <laughs> it was a great track, yeah. That was an ass. That was an ass track. That was a good race. <laughs> Spa. I was just looking at your uh, comment because I posted Spa's. I don't want to say Photoshop, but it is technically a Photoshop of uh, DK Isle mm. uh, in the distance with K Rules thing, and I just told him to put the Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition logo on it. Yeah, and uh, he responds to that post with "Ooh, Bernardo." <laughs> <laughs> oh god! <laughs> okay, back in China. Wrong way. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that much shit to fall down. Well, uh, here we are. It's excite truck, not mid truck. Pleasant afternoon out truck. Yeah. <laughs> Pleasant afternoon. There are no hills. You know, you can't go above 50 miles an hour. Yeah, if Damus was here, he would probably make 50 more commands. <laughs> Might need to have a talk with him about that, because he's getting a bit much. As long as we keep the net one. We'll think about it. Oh, we have a new donation. Oh, cool. Forty dollars from Galvajon. Uh, I donate all too irregularly to these kind of things. Good to see old Anton still doing it for the kids. Uh, that could have been phrased better. That was his comment, <laughs> not mine. But uh, thank you, Galvajon. We appreciate every donation, even if it was one dollar. Mate, it still makes a difference to these kids' lives. You were doing some sick backward flips there, by the way. Yep, entirely intentional. Straight into the wall. <laughs> nice, nice crash. Forty dollars is a lot, mate. Don't poo-poo it. Yeah, like that is a full new game for a kid, isn't it? Ah, he says, but forty dollars makes forty difference. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Spa says, crash bandy car. Uh, no, that is the onomatopoeia followed by what your dad does when you take his Ferrari and crash it into the first wall that you see. Uh, you banish it from the car. He's gonna ban- yeah, okay, you get it. Yeah. God, it's like a fucking animal eye in the desert that just refuses to die. It's fine, we workshop our jokes here. No. Every joke meticulously crafted. If Flame doesn't laugh, I don't say it. So I'll just stop laughing entirely and maybe you'll stop talking. Yeah, maybe. As uh, says, this is what comedy is like after a 27 hour stream. No, this is me in general. You think my handed an excuse just wrong with it. <laughs> yeah, one of my best mates said once, Tom, God, you don't have to talk a lot of shit. But when you say something good, by God, you knock it out of the park. I'm paraphrasing here. It was more like 90% of what you say is crap, 10% is gold, or something like that. It, it always stuck with me because it's true. I am an obnoxious and very talkative person because, A, I just like talking. God, I wonder why I did commentary for a living. Um, but also, like, I just talk and talk and talk. And I make jokes because I always liked making people laugh in school. Because obviously, being a fat frigger, it was partially a, d a defense mechanism, but people laughed. I don't know. It worked. Very nice race there, by the way, for him. I did it. I don't know if that pushed he me did over, it. But... Oh, I've got an S rank. Cool. Seems to be getting a lot of those.
Wow, the music from Mexico fucking slaps. Yeah, it does, yeah. Now yeah, we've got one more Canadian one. Cool. Oh, so it's the final race. Yeah. Like, I don't know if there's more off that. We'll see how quickly I finish this one. And okay, okay. Actually, I'll stick with the wolf, because that seems to have been fairly reliable for me. Winding road. I hope you don't have to drive on up here like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can tell this is going to be a long one because the time limit's seven and a half minutes. Yikes! It's going to be a yikes and oof and perhaps even a cringe for me, bro. Hmm. <laughs> I what hate the fun. fact that I've started using the word cringe unironically. <laughs> it all it always happens, you know. Yeah, like, there's no such thing as an ironic joke. <laughs> no, but it became really bad when I was, like, thinking to myself earlier after listening to the Bug Snacks theme. Kind of bug and kind of cringe, and it just kind of went on like that for no reason. God. <laughs> Don't ask. Hey, Scrapper, welcome to the stream. We're raising money for Child's Play. Donate buttons below. Here are some big damn trucks for your enjoyment. Fine game, I see the warning, I get the message. <laughs> you are going too fast. Too much fun is detected. Would you like to change that? <laughs> sort of landed on the track. I'll it's take also it. good enough. <laughs> oh, your name is from a Jaeger in Pacific Rim. I could hope. Headbot is right. You either die saying it ironically or you live long enough for it to become unironic. Sounds pretty poggers. Yep. Pretty poggers indeed. Okay, that wall was a bit too deep. <laughs> shame. Let's go through the middle. Real there. shame. Uh, Shadow Reaper pops in the chat and says, So Tom, what was the final time in the DK run? Twitch says 16 hours, but the ending screen said 20. Well, actually, the ending screen said 24 hours, 33 minutes. The final time, if you'll let me look at the VOD, uh, and this is a few seconds off, but that's about it, was... Let's have a look here. I can tell you the file size was 65 gig. Yeah. Uh, it was... 27 hours, 22 minutes, and 5 seconds. Maybe off a little bit when the final VOD's out, because I have got to trim out the times when the connection went down, but that's fine. Yeah, no worries. I think for that stream, leaving it as is is fine, because it's an event more than anything. Yeah, that, that's my excuse to not go and dig through the whole fucking thing. <laughs> no, I won't actually to do that, mate. I, I did, during the stream, I did start making notes of timestamps just in case, but, like, it didn't go as bad as it could have, honestly. No, it didn't. Like, some mini games gave us trouble. There were parts where we just didn't really know how to make progress, like in Frantic Factory. Mm. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, it's about as standard a DK64. A hundred and one percent run from I would say a casual gamer like me you could get. Yeah. Yes. Uh here you go. Twenty seven hours of straight dong. 
Oh my god, is there, a, is there a fucking forest fire going on right here? Yeah. Alright, just add to the hype, why don't you? You could buy a candidate, I guess. Stay safe, Tanner. It's probably in one of these trucks. How many points does the uh, first place position actually give you? I believe it's 50. Okay. Let's <laughs> try into that. <laughs> nice. I knew I was going to hit it a few seconds before I did, but for some reason I just froze in place. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, Silverdo says, So, Super Mario Sunshine Remastered is a reality. Do we 100% for Nintendo Fun 64? No. Thank you, on it, Tom. Because first of all, it's already been done, and I probably won't be able to do it better. Second of all, fuck no. <laughs> I'd rather do DK64 again. <laughs> you were so close to crashing to that thing. I know. And that tree there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, fuck. <laughs> The air in this game is just insane. It is so cool, yeah. Nice. Just made it by two points. Oh my god. Hey, and it was all the same number as well. Yep. I see we've got about five or so minutes left. I'm going to give that other track one more shot. Okay, well. Because, like, I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but if I can, that will mean I've got at least a pass on all of them. Sure, mate. You must do it for Scotland. Otherwise, Billy Connolly's gonna come around your house and kiss down your trousers. Uh, that was a reference to the incontinence trousers skit he did way back when. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up with my mum showing me uh, Billy Connolly skits and whatnot. Yeah, that's fair. She, she was a fan of his. Also a fan of uh, Victoria Wood and so on. Ah, not too familiar with that. Uh, Den Ladies and so on. Yeah, uh, that Liam Robinson bloke uh, said apparently the remasters, and uh, they're true, and they're not going to be super intensive or anything. Nah. Yeah, don't forget a remaster with no added content is just the game in a higher res. Yeah. Although to be fair, like with Sunshine in particular as a GameCube game, that's what we need really—just make it available one way or another. Yeah. The, the, but the thing there is, like, they'd have to do something about um, the analog shoulder buttons because uh, in Sunshine you could control how high the pressure was in the nozzle of flood by clicking in the buttons or not. Like, if you held it just a little bit without clicking it in, it would just like do a little spray and so on. Well, that's fine to a degree because the Switch supports the GameCube controllers. They just need to actually produce more than like three of the fucking like adapters this time. Mm. So that's the problem. Like, they have a system that supports one of the best controllers ever put out, and like they just make it really hard for you to actually be able to use them. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where I'm going. It. <laughs>
I landed, cool. <laughs> I was not expecting nice. that. I guess I'm very much enjoying listening to uh, the RST while watching it race. Nice, it's really good music, yeah. They could make like the pressure sensitivity button based rather than analog based, but that sort of thing just reminds me of Luigi's Mansion 3DS, and I don't really want to go down that route. Nah. Because that's what was fun about Sunshine, you know, manipulating water and whatnot. Juicy boost. Not good use to landing upside down, though. Whoa, that was gonna be very high if you managed to save it. Yeah, well, I did. He didn't. He did not, folks. Oh god. Yeah, I'm off screen myself. <laughs> uh, give it one more yeah. shot. Yeah, can do. Let's just see how close I do get to it this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or 16 below, I think. Ah. Yeah, give it another shot, because I feel like you're doing much better now. Yeah, let's just give it one more round thing. We can move on to Nintendo Land. Mm hmm. Nice to hear. Yeah, they could easily add Luigi into uh, Sunshine HD, I would say. Yeah, that'd be, like, it'd be a lot more substantial than last time. <laughs> um, <Yeah>. I've <laughs> it. Give it another shot, mate, it's fine. Eh, yeah, we just finished the race. You can make it back up, I think. Yoshi being able to swim would be nice, but it also removes a lot of the challenge. Hmm. Like when, when, when some of these things built around him not being able to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was that's what it was weird how he just dissolves though. I don't understand though. Uh. Wait, you're telling me the Yoshis in Sunshine were made out of pain? But, but, but you find them from eggs! 
real eggs, and there's no like cutscene or hints of them being made by Shadow Mario. <laughs> this does me a fright and flame. <laughs> Talk like a normal person, please. I can't. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, yeah, it's a constant burn. Go and go and keep it up. Give it another shot, it's fine. I want you to uh, beat this, and I want you to be proud of the fact that you beat this, because you're so close. Well, we'll give it one more shot, but I don't want to hold the whole day's streams up. Fair enough, mate, fair enough. Well, I'm enjoying playing Excitron with you, it's good. Yeah, but we also have other games to play today. <laughs> I know. Like, yeah, we got like 17 hours of Nintendo Land and then Fire Emblem. <laughs> oh man, it's a hot day for me, I can tell you. <laughs> China right now? Uh, <laughs> either that or Scotland. Like, I do notice the tracks from China and the tracks from Scotland tend to look quite similar. No, this is Scotland. That's European style castles. Yeah. Sorry, I just got to China in the OST and I was wondering. Yeah. I think a blue coin detector as a quality of life feature or unlockable in Sunshine HD would be good. Yeah, something so you actually stand off for charms. Yeah. I don't think they'd make a quality of life feature a uh, amiibo thing. But like Nintendo can uh, be uh, stingy or whatever the term is from time to time, but not to that degree. I think they have locked some stuff behind amiibos before, like. No, no I'm not saying they don't do that. I'm just saying, like, to that degree. Like, something that generally makes the game better and was intended for the game would be locked, but say, having a Wolf Link partner in Breath of the Wild via an amiibo. That's not something that's base part of the game. So you don't really need that per se. Yeah, but then like, didn't, wasn't it with the Twilight Princess remaster that they put a whole dungeon behind an amiibo? That's more of a fair comparison, yeah. Yeah, because that is a bit, you know, take the piss. No, no, that's not really. Yeah. Oh. It's that one hill that you always have problems with for some reason. Yeah, it's hard to work up to it because you're just recovering from another hill. Uh huh. But I think that might have fucked me again. Yeah, you need to be aware of it then, Flame. Yeah, well, this is the last run, so we'll see how it ends. Well, no, give it one more shot because I know you can do better than this. Uh. Well, don't give me that. Give it the old college try. One more, and that's like one more. <laughs> okay, well. 
<laughs> Are you doing the jump motion when you go over the hill, so, so as well? I am, but it's skimped because I'm landing just beforehand. Well, just be careful, lad. If only life rewarded you stars for doing mundane things. <laughs> uh, I know they're more extreme here, but you got a sandwich. Two stars. Hey. Uh, Tyler suggests making a smaller jump before it. Yeah, well, it's, I've got to prepare myself because a lot of the terrain before that is quite similar, but we'll see how it goes. Like, let up on the gas uh, for the hill right before it, I suppose. Mm -hmm. See some cars flying through the air, like, whoa. We actually have a, uh, a uh, sub emoticon for retake, actually. Oh, yeah. That was one of the first ones I thought of. Now, jump. Undershot it a little bit. It's cool, mate. There's another lap. Yeah. <laughs> that was a bit too far. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck me. Ah, oh, Jesus. Oh yeah, the final lap! Let me to uh, put this on you, Flame, but uh, I got a call from uh, the kids, and they say if you don't get this, they're gonna have to give all the money back. Well, I know you're bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> of course I'm... <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting it. your joke down because it went funny, that's why. Okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> Five stars. <laughs> Passive aggression. Five stars. <laughs> well, wow, nice turbo jump. Didn't mean to turbo jump there, that was the worst place to accidentally turbo jump. <laughs> it's okay, go. Ah, oh. <laughs> Go, 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 go. Right. Shoot that jump quick before I crash into the thing. <laughs> go on, keep going, keep going. Ah, oh, well. <laughs> you gave it your best shot, mate. I'm and, uh, it there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Alright, so... I think it, in your spare time you could do that, but right now we do have to move on. Yeah, so let's just let this loading finish. We'll get ourselves back to the title screen, just so we have something fancy to end on. And that will do us for Excite Truck. Thank you all for watching, and coming later on is Fire Emblem Warriors, which will be played by Tanner. Thank you, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye for now.